Welcome back to another Torah Tuesday. I want to take another look with you at Genesis chapter 1. We've already talked about the days and how the first three days mirror the last three days of creation. We've looked at one particular aspect of verse 21, the sea monster that God creates. Today I want to take a closer look at day 6, the day in which God creates the animals. And there's something really interesting that happens in on day 6. So perhaps you haven't noticed this before. In Genesis 1 verse 24, it says, Let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind. We don't have humans yet. Humans come later on day 6, but we already have domesticated animals. We have livestock. So whatever is going on in Genesis 1, it's clearly viewing God's creative work in retrospect from the perspective of a fully functioning Israelite society. We saw in a previous video that the sun, moon, and stars, the purpose of the sun, moon, and stars is to regulate the festival calendar. Clearly you can't have festivals unless you have people, and you can't have festivals for those people until you have something for them to celebrate in their festivals, namely God's redemptive work in the Exodus and give the giving of the law. Israel has lots of festivals, but they all tie to God's work in history on their behalf. So the sun, moon, and stars are regulating festivals. The sea monster that we talked about last time, uh, the Tananim, is actually probably a mythical creature it could be a mythical creature that the Israelites um, thought existed, or it was part of the lore in surrounding cultures. And so the idea is that even the scariest thing you can dream up, the boogeyman in your closet or the monster under your bed, God can tame that thing. He is sovereign and he is ruling over all things. So again, uh, the the things that were told in Genesis 1 about what God creates are told in ways that are clearly in retrospect, written from a later perspective. And here is another good example. God is making livestock before he makes humans, domesticated animals. So part of the purpose of Genesis chapter 1 is to regulate the Israelite calendar so that they can pattern their work week after God's and rest on the seventh day and, and um, pattern their festival calendar. But another part of it is to regulate the domains in which each of the residents live. Putting each thing in its place, each, each creature is in its proper domain. And so livestock, wild animals, and as Dan Block translates it, creepy crawlies, are the things that appear on day six that God makes. It's also interesting that um, God asks the land to bring forth the animals. The animals come out of the ground. And uh, one more thing that I that I really found interesting as I was working through Genesis 1 in Hebrew, and here I'm just reading from my Hebrew Bible in Genesis 1.26. It says, And God said, Let us make humanity in our image according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, or the land, and over all the creepy crawly things that creep upon the land. So in this verse, we have a specific mention that the land itself is under the domain of humans, that the purpose of God's creation of humans is to fill the earth and subdue it, and to rule over each aspect of God's creation, including the land itself. Care, being caretakers of the land is part of our vocation as humans. Whether that be livestock and you know ruling over the animals and caring for them and making sure that they flourish, or whether it be the land itself. One book that I would highly recommend that is on this topic is Sandy Richter's Stewards of Eden what scripture says about the environment and why it matters. She does a really amazing job of tying the, the biblical text in with our current responsibility to care for God's world. So I hope this was interesting to you. Be sure to click the like below if you enjoyed this video and share it with friends. 
and I'll join you again next week for another Torah Tuesday.